Off we go. Good day, fellow equestrian adventuresses. Good morning from Canada. Uh, good evening from India. Uh, welcome to our podcast for women who love horses, travel, and adventure. Uh, we have a, a great show for you today. Uta and I are going to share uh, lots of our summer adventures uh, with you. So, um, Uta, now you're back home. How was, uh, how was your little uh, escape to Germany for, uh, for about a month? Good evening, Heather. Yeah, it's back to normal. For me, it's evening. For you, it's early morning. And uh, yes, I'm back home in India. I really enjoyed my little trip. I mean, it was later and shorter than usual, but it was still, it was very, very nice to be back home to see my family and uh, just, you know, go for a tiny bit of a vacation, even though it didn't really feel like a vacation because I had to study quite a bit. And um, so uh, I was busy uh, through most of it. But yeah, it's good to be back home, see my horses, see my dogs. And even though there's less work here because of Corona now, there's no riding guests. There is uh, very little, you know, there's hardly anything. It still feels like mid of summer because that's usually the time we are pretty off because it's so hot here. So usually by this time of the year, I'm back and being busy, but at the moment I'm not because of Corona. So it still feels like summer here. Well, here in, uh, in Canada, in Saskatchewan, where I'm located, we had an amazing summer. July and August were, were outstanding weather. We had high, hot temperatures um, with a little mix of rain, uh, you know, kept everything really nice and green. Um, and then it was like September 1st hit and boom, right into fall. Uh, now it did, we've had a few days where it did warm up a little bit, but uh, when you've been used to wearing t-shirts and shorts every day and all of a sudden um, on Saturday we got this like weather advisory that you know an abrupt change to fall was coming and it, I think it was like 30 degrees Celsius on the Saturday and I think the Sunday it was like only plus two Ooh, so okay, it, is... it dropped it, it did drop uh, dramatically but um, we, it, it slowly started to come back up but you know, you do, you move into fall and, you know, the, 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 the nice thing about a seasonal change is, you know, the change that comes with everything, you know, we're back into September, um, school started today here now in, in the province that I live in, the students have returned to the classroom, which is, um, you know, a, 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 a little step forward moving away from, you know, COVID-19 and all mm. of the challenges that we've really faced it with that for the last, like, five, six months. So really hoping that, you know, the kids can stay in school and not have to go to the online learning here. Yeah. Um, but it is crossed. always nice. Yes. That's so is... got, yeah, it's got so my son off to school. So uh, now I am free to talk to you about horses and adventure all day. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, it's nice to kind of go a little bit down memory lane and think of all the nice uh, things. Well, you had the proper summer. I mean, for me, we anyway a little bit tilted with the seasons because in India, really, we think of summer, which is May, June. And for us at the moment, it is actually, well, it's monsoon season. It has been monsoon season. It was monsoon season in August and it's still monsoon season now, even though we are pretty much at the end of it. But uh, we don't really have a proper summer. Continue. So you had some nice riding in um, in Canada. You had some nice riding in the Rocky Mountains, I think. So why don't you tell us a little bit about that? And I will tell you a little bit about my riding experience in Germany this year. Well, you know, we, uh, my husband and I had the opportunity to, to do a little bit of travel this summer, essentially in our own backyard. Uh, with all the travel restrictions, um, going on, we weren't able to to leave the country, uh, so we we took that opportunity to spend some time, you know, exploring parts of of Canada and Western Canada specifically um, that we hadn't been to before. Um, so we traveled to Waterton National Park, which is uh, located right on the um, south western corner border of Alberta and the state of Montana. So on the Canadian side, it's Waterton National Park. And on the American side, it's Glacier National Park. So basically, the, 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 um, the international border kind of runs down the middle of the lake. Um, so depending on uh, if you're out on the boat, what side or what part of the lake you are, you're either on the Canadian side or the American side. 
Um, so it was absolutely beautiful there. Uh, the mountains, the lakes, you come kind of out of the foothills of, of southern Alberta into this beautiful uh, landscape of trees and mountains and, and of course the water. And now the, the lakes are based um, with quite larger rocks. So I think that that keeps the, the sediment down. So you really can see the water is so clear. Um, and it, it was just absolutely beautiful. So while we were there, um, there was a, a riding stable that you could go in and rent horses to do a, a variety of different, you know, if you wanted an hour ride or a two hour, five hour, full day, whichever you'd like. Um, they probably had 60 horses at this, at this facility. So they really did have something for kind of all levels of riding. Uh, so, so my husband and I had uh, popped over there and, and he's not a, an experienced rider. So, you know, we thought, okay, well, uh, we'll, we'll take it easy on him. We'll do like an hour and a half ride uh, through the mountains uh, just to, you know, get a little sample. And boy, it was, you know, it was so, so nice. Um, so we got there. And, and it was, it was interesting going through the process because there was, you know, we had to sign a waiver basically saying, um, and then we had, uh, there was a hand washing station. Uh, we went through, everyone was sized for helmets and then you're sized up for your horse. Um, so my husband got this great big quarter horse. Um, his name was Boz, um, but he was like just the perfect fit. He, you know, if you pulled on the reins one way, he went that way, gave him a kick, he moved forward. Um, so which was really nice for, for an inex inexperienced rider. The horse was pre-programmed. It was like you put the microchip in them and like an inexperienced rider, just, you know, go slow. And if he point, you know, go in the direction he points you. Um, I was super lucky to, uh, to get to ride a Tennessee Walker, which I've never ridden before. Uh, his name was Yankee. He was a kind of a liver chestnut color, and I just love that color. Um, but he was, was so nice, and he was a um, he relatively new to their herd there. So, so they um, when I had said that I you know I had some experience that this would be a, a you know an opportunity for me to try him out, um, and he was so nice. Like when we were first started out, there was no you know if I wanted to go a little bit faster or, or hang back. No, no problems with them. But um, one of the coolest things that I learned about Tennessee walkers were they have this like uh, a couple gears at the walk. So as we were going along, we, one of the horses in our group um, was quite slow and the girl was, was very inexperienced and she couldn't really get him going. And I had to go, we had to end up having to go around them. And I asked my horse to, uh, you know, speed up a little and he had a whole nother gear at the walk. Like he could just walk faster. And I thought that was so like most, most horses, you give them a kick, they're going to move into the trot. But this guy, he just had a faster speed at the walk, which was, uh, which was nice when you, you know, if you're in a situation, you don't want to really go too fast. Um, but so we start out on this ride and uh, we kind of go across a, you know, more of a plainsy type field, just grassy kind of thing. Well, then we come into um, where the river has, has kind of, um, with the heavy snowfall, has kind of made the river creeks really windy. So you have to cross multiple water. Well, it was so nice to, you know, you get into the water and some of the horses had a drink and the water would have only maybe they're maybe as high as their knee at the at the deepest point um but it was so nice you know some stopped to have a drink some just kept going um but the water was so clear and you know when you can see the creek go or the river go for you know it continues on it was so nice um and then we continued on um you know kind of winding through um, the forest and, and into the base of the mountain. Uh, we saw where uh, the elk had been sleeping. Um, I guess they, when they, when the elk um, camp down for, for their rest, um, how they all, you know, the, the, the grass was like perfectly flat in all of these little different areas. Um, it, it, it was so nice. Now, unfortunately, we didn't see any wildlife besides some squirrels and birds. Um, so yeah, so we know, no wildlife. Um, I was secretly hoping that we would see a bear. I've, um, 
I have it in all this time. I've been anxiously waiting to see a bear in the wild in the in in one of these national parks, and and no luck. So, uh, but we continued on. We kind of went up some hills. Um, the horses were so beautiful. The the scenery was was just outstanding. And probably the best part of it all was just how, you know, how it just fills your soul when you're, you know, sitting on the back of a horse, uh, you know, not worry in the world, um, and your horse is doing what you want it to do. Um, you know, we, we saw all of these great things to experience lots of things. Um, my husband really enjoyed it, um, which was so nice because it normally it's me going out on my own or going with my girlfriends going riding. Um, so it was kind of nice to be able to share that with him. Um, and hopefully, you know, I planted enough uh, seed <laughs> there with that, you know, there'll be future rides uh, with him. Um, I, I am hoping that maybe get him uh, a few little lessons over the winter that maybe come next spring or summer, there will be opportunity for uh, maybe some more adventures, maybe some international adventures uh, with him. So I, you know, he's pretty good at the walk in the trot, not so much at the canter yet, but uh, once we, once he can master that, then, then, then we're set and I can drag him off to all these places that I like to go to and, and uh, then, then I don't feel as guilty leaving it. Uh, then he won't have to stay at home and I won't feel guilty. So now that was my little adventure. Uh, I will be having um, a podcast with the, uh, one of the owners of this stable in Waterton National Park. Uh, they went through a horrific forest fire in that area a few years ago. Um, and she has a, an amazing story of, you know, the lead up to the fire, uh, what happened during the fire and really the how they've rebuilt their business since then. So uh, that will be coming up in the next few weeks. That sounds so, interesting. So why don't you tell me about, um, yeah, why don't you tell me a little bit about, you know, I know you went riding a few times when you were in Germany um, on some big horses and little horses. So <laughs> why don't you tell us about that? Yeah, I can. Um yeah, I mean, I didn't do a lot of, you know, big um, touristy rides now in Germany because I was there only a short time. But whenever I'm in Germany, I enjoy riding. Actually, I enjoy riding wherever I go because it's such a great way of discovering a country. So horse riding in Germany is very, very popular sports. We have uh, more than one million horses and ponies in Germany. So it's a huge industry. There's a couple of different geographical uh, areas. There is like down south, we have the mountains, the high mountains, the Alps. Then there's usually an area ahead or in front of these mountains, which is a big plain. And uh, then comes what we call the middlelands, the forests. That's a kind of low mountainous regions, more like a chains several chains of hills so that's the area i came from where i do a lot of riding and i think personally it is one of the best places to ride because it's these gentle rolling hills lots of forest in between you have the villages and fields and uh, so it never gets boring because you know you ride a lot through the forest and you come out to see the next village there's some fields around some pastures and meadows uh, there's a couple of rivers, so there's the river valley, so it's always interesting, there's always something to discover, never gets boring. Uh, you have beautiful villages in Germany, so it's just a very, very nice area to ride in. Uh, then you can go further up north. Is that the Black again. Forest? For instance, yeah. Yeah, so if you go a little bit further up north, then you have, again, more of a plain, you have the, uh, the Heide, the Lüneburger Heide, which is a very famous riding area, and you go further up north and finally comes the seaside. So then you can ride at the seaside of the North Sea or the Baltic Sea. So that is really interesting area to ride as well. So um, yeah, it's, it's nice. So um, I mostly, I do the riding in the forest areas around my home. So this is where I was riding today a couple of times. And um, I have two very good friends who own horses close to my place. One has uh, Arabian crosses, so she is an endurance rider as well. She did a lot of endurance when she was a bit younger. At the moment, she has a small kid. It's nice. Um, so she has nice horses, and we did a couple of rides. And it's beautiful because we ride a lot through the forest, and because her horses used to go in endurance, they're you know, very speedy and very fast, and we can really go at a quite speedy pace up and down the mountains and through the forest. And even if it's hot, forest riding is always nice because, well, you know, you never get the direct sunshine. It's, it's nice and cool in the forest. So I love riding through forest area, basically. 
And then my other friend, you saw the picture, she has a bit of a bigger size horse. So it's a German draft horse. Now we have a lot of German draft breeds, actually old breeds, but nowadays people don't like them any longer because, well, they are not exactly very suitable for riding. Uh, so we don't really have this very big, big ones, like for instance, the Shire or the Clydesdale you have in Great Britain, but ours are mostly a tit bit smaller. So hers is a Rhineland German draft, Rheinisch Deutsches Kaltblut. So these are medium sized draft horses, rather smallish draft horses, which used to be uh, taken into the vineyards of Germany. So near the Rhine Valley, we have lots of steep vineyards up the mountainside. So in order to work the vineyards, people use, still use horses still today because it's very difficult to take heavy equipment up there because it's very steep, the slopes are very steep and heavy equipment would actually dense the ground the soil very quickly, which wouldn't be very good for the wine. The horses are a perfect way to, to work these vineyards. So she got a horse from one of the breeders there who still works with his horses into in the vineyards. And he sold him because he said he wasn't very steady. He wasn't steady enough to do the work. So I found that very funny because I always thought like draft horses are steady by nature. But uh, hers isn't. He's a bit of a, of a shy horse, a little bit of a spooky one. So he's a, a scaredy hare, I always say. Like he kind of spooks of small, small things. And it's a little difficult because when a draft horse spokes, you know, when a horse spokes, a pony spokes, you know, and wants to go home, you, there's not much you can do to stop it. But when a draft horse spokes, um, it's still about double the, you know, weight of a normal warm blood horse or say a small warm blood <laughs> horse. So when he spokes, when he goes home, he goes home, right? There's not much you can do to stop him. So she had a couple of these experiences that he just turned around and went straight home and she had a little trouble stopping him. But now he's, he's kind of... I think he's 11 or 12, I'm not quite sure, but he's now kind of settled age and now he got a lot better. And uh, she does a lot of ground training with them. So we had a couple of nice rides together and she always lets me ride her draft and she rides a Spanish horse. She has two horses and a little stable at home. So it's always fun to go riding. And uh, so, yeah, I love these forest rides and I love the area around our place. And then I visited my very, very best friend in Southern Germany in Bavaria. So with her, I, well, she lives close to the mountains, not yet in, in the real mountains, but in this kind of flat areas, flatlands um, in front of the, of the Alps. So she's always not very happy about the terrain she rides in because there's a lot of agriculture. So there's a lot of fields, there's forest as well, but a lot of fields and a lot of big, large uh, agricultural areas. So she always says, well, the riding area around my place is not so good. I don't really disagree. I mean, there's better riding areas, but because I enjoy riding with her, it's more the company rather than the, you know, the variation and the rides. I still enjoy myself a lot riding with her. And there is a lot of forest as well. So we ride a lot through the forest area there too. Um, but what I really want to tell about um, as well, one of my favorite rides in Germany was really going up the coast. I think riding at the beach is something every rider, as long as you don't live close to the coast, it's something special for every rider and horseman, I guess, a horsewoman is to ride at the beach because you simply have a lot of space. Usually you have the ocean. It's something very, very special in particular is a big beach because in Germany at the North Sea, we have a lot of difference in tides. So the difference between low tide and high tide is quite pronounced. It can be several kilometers. So in low tide, you have like a huge open area and it's all like basically sea ground, right? Sea floor. So it's a sand ground, but the sand is compressed and it's hard. So it's the best ground for riding because it's hard enough that it's a good support, yet soft enough that it doesn't damage your horse's legs. So you can really go for like kilometers of cantering, uh, you know, down that huge beach, which... Uh, kind of gets filled up mm. with, with water during the, during the high tide. But if you ride out at low tide, it's, it's really amazing. So I did that a couple of years ago. When I was a little kid, actually, I used to spend a lot of my summers at the North Sea because my uncle had a holiday home there. And my grandparents used to take me and my cousin up there for, well, summer, sometimes Easter vacation. And uh, my grandfather was the driving force behind my interest in horses let's say it that way. So he used to sponsor my first riding classes. So when we were there, there was a little stable right behind the, behind the, uh, behind the dais. So that's a kind of, uh, how do you call that? Like a kind of protection against flooding. 
So right there behind that kind of wall, there is there was a driving stable and he used to take me when I was, I don't know, maybe around 10, 11. So I used to ride there and take lessons there. I have no idea whether I ever rode there at the beach. I cannot remember that. But um, I remember the stable. So when we went there a couple of years ago, I said, I have to go and see if that stable is still there. And if it's still there, I try to book a ride at the beachside. And that's what I did a couple of years ago. And it was just amazing. You know, these endless canters. It wasn't really galloping because we were quite a big group. We were about 10 people. So it wasn't about going too fast because we had horses of all shapes and sizes. I had um, a sport horse, but there were a couple of ponies and a couple of like semi-draft horses. So like draft crosses, I guess there were. So we didn't really go that fast, but it was just, it's just amazing to have this huge open area around you and you can smell the sea and the ocean. You can hear the, the birds over, over your head. And it's that, that salty smell in the air, which is just so amazing. And the wind in your, in your face and riding there was just one of the really best experiences I've ever had pretty much so yeah it was it, it's one of my my favorite places in germany for riding so i can't wait to do that maybe again one day let's see we are a little far from the coast it takes us about six hours driving going up there so it's not something you do for a weekend it's something you can only do for like a week-long vacation or a 10 days vacation but yeah so riding in germany is very varied and there's a lot of great places to ride even in the in the major river sites we have the mosul or the rhine river um oh well that sounds like you had a really great holiday i love hearing about um different destinations that you can go riding at germany is definitely on my bucket list um you know i'm i'm a i love that north coast i i love that you know, the, the North Sea, it, there's just something enchanting about it. It's not, you know, when you go to the Mediterranean or those kind of things where it's, you know, it, you, you think of that peaceful water and, and the bluey kind of water, but you go up to that North Sea and, and there's just some, you know, there's times that it's quite angry. Um, but like you said, you know, galloping along, you know, when the, the tide is out, um, you know, I'm definitely a fall person, so I like to wear sweaters and that kind of stuff. So riding, you know, and being a little bit cooler right up my alley. Uh, you know, I love, you know, beach gallops probably are, are right up there um, at the top of one of my favorite things to do. Um, so we will have to, um, maybe we'll do a whole episode on fun places to do beach gallops, hmm. uh, whether it yeah, be, you know, Northern Germany or Ireland or something like that. So, um, so now you're back home, um, back getting into the swing of things. So when does, um, like for your regular riding season, if this wasn't a COVID year, when would your riding season really, uh, ramp up in, uh, in India? Pretty much at the moment, like we usually start our season beginning of September. So we have our first proper safaris around about mid to end September. So if this was a normal year, I, I guess we would probably start around 10th September, uh, 10th, uh, 15th September. So um, yeah, so yeah, so pretty much at the moment that um, this is a COVID year, so it doesn't seem to happen anytime soon. Um, well, that's super, you know, it's unfortunate that COVID has, um, has really put a damper on, on this whole year. Uh, you know, it's made, you know, challenges for, for everyone who, you know, in, in almost all activities, not just horseback riding, all activities seem to have had some sort of kink added to them. Um, so I, I think that I'm, I'm looking forward to 2020 leaving us. In, in a few months, I did see something, it's like 170, oh, it can't even be that many sleeps till Christmas. Okay. Um, so, you know, once we get this year over, we can really start planning for, for next year, um, different adventures that you and I want to do, um, that our guests or our, our, our listeners want to do, um, and sharing all of these great stories with them. Uh, I really think that uh, that 2021 is going to be a an adventure filled year for everyone, um, with less COVID and more fun Adventures. and uh, horsey and travel and adventure times. Yes, exactly. Let's hope it. Um, I really hope to. I'm I'm really I said the other day also. I just wish for 2020 to end to kind of end and finish very quickly. 
and just hope 2021 will somehow be better because, uh, well, can't be worse really. I mean, touch wood. Uh, <laughs> how is that with Murphy's Law? Um, can always get worse, but uh, let's just hope for the best. And yeah, we, we definitely are planning on, on doing a bit more destination episodes, talking about some of the writing destinations we have done or we are researching for you and um, just, you know, to dream a little bit about the, all the adventures we cannot really have this year and which hopefully wait for us in the coming years once this whole COVID episode is, well, manageable or over or whatever it is, but um, things will turn out a little bit better and we hopefully can all start our travelings again. And yeah, and so long as we can do that, well, we can always dream and talk about these episodes and we can always talk about different destinations and different places to go riding. And I think that's something we're definitely going to do a bit in the next couple of weeks. Well, I, I'm looking forward to it. Um, I know that our listeners, um, you know, they send in great questions on the Facebook page and they email us um, with all, all, you know, topic ideas. So keep those coming. Uh, we'd love to hear your questions, your topic ideas. Um, if you have a great story and would like to share it with us, uh, definitely send myself or Uta an email. Uh, our email addresses are in the show notes. Uh, where you can get in touch with us and uh, we would love to, you know, interview you, ask you questions and hear your amazing stories about your horsey travel adventures. Because, um, you know, we, this is how we're getting through this, you know, more challenging time. So, so we can't wait to uh, hear more from you. Exactly. So it was good talking to you today, Heather, and talk to you soon. And to all of you, happy trails. Happy trails. So that was...